One of the most popular features in Patronum is the email signature management. It allows you to manipulate the email signature for any user, provided you have the relevant permissions and roles. So we thought we'd uh, do a, a video here to give you some hints and tips and show you some of the ways that you can uh, work with those signatures. Initially, I'm just looking at uh, the people view here, and I'll show you how we can uh, go into one particular user and have a look at their signature and maybe tweak it a little bit. The scenario here might be that, that Chris here has gone on holiday or something and needs us to update his, his email signature while he's not around. So I can click into the signatures tab here in his profile view. And we'll see that Chris has got a fairly basic looking signature here, but I could make any changes I needed to to that. I can uh, maybe add a telephone number or, or, or something in here. You've got the usual text manipulation buttons that you'd find in any kind of editor across the top here for different fonts and bold and underline all, all those kind of things. But I can um, make life a little bit easier for myself. I just put a T in here as if I was going to put in a, a telephone number. Rather than having to look up his number and uh, copy and paste it or anything like that, we've provided all of the information you need on these buttons, uh, these drop down menus here. So on the personal list, I'll be able to find Chris's phone, just like that, and it'll paste that number in for you. And then we can update the signature and away we go. So that's uh, quite handy from a, an individual point of view, just uh, making changes to one person. But the real power of Patronum comes when we want to apply changes en masse to lots of people. And we would do that through policies. So if I jump over to the policies area here, using the menu on the left, we can see that this is a relatively new installation of Patronum, so I don't yet have any policies created. But I can create a new one using this floating action button on the right hand side. Click on that and we'll create an, a new policy which we'll call email signatures. Now the tabs we have in the policy management screen are very similar to the ones that we saw in Chris's individual profile. But we also have this new one called Workflow. And this allows us to determine exactly which users we want this policy to apply to. And we do that through a combination of conditions and filters. So the conditions might be looking at which organizational unit we want to apply it to, or which groups that we want to apply it to, and so on. And then the filters might uh, allow us to add additional filtering, such as um, information from their profile, or attributes from their profile, such as maybe this policy only applies to users that have a, role, a job title, uh, including the word manager, for example. Now I'm going to leave this blank for the time being so that this policy applies to everybody. And I'm going to jump straight into the signature tab. So we see we've got the, the same kind of uh, text editor that we had before. And I could start creating uh, a signature here that's going to apply to everyone. Rather than start from scratch though, we've got some predefined templates that you can choose from. So if I click this configure button over on the right hand side, we'll see some sample signatures. And we've got everything from simple straightforward ones, which would include a profile picture there, through to even more basic ones. Then we have some that include social links in text, others that include social links using icons. And we have some colorful options that we can choose from and so on. So you would just pick one of these that you want to start from and then manipulate it from there. So let's let's start with this one. What you can do is using these options below, you can change the fonts for di different uh, sections of the signature here and you can change the colors. So to give you an example of that, let me just change this color. If you know the hex code of the color you need, maybe you've got that from a, a corporate branding guideline or something, you can just type those in. Or here, I'm just going to use these options and let's put a nice red option in here for the those text options instead. Okay, so let's uh, add that in. And we'll see that although I'm seeing text in here, when we add it into our policy, it replaces the actual text with variables or attributes. So we can see here, F name, L name, job title, address, and so on. And these variables are encased in double curly brackets. If you want to add more of these variables in, you can type them in yourself, or you can use these drop-down buttons to find them from the profile information directly. 
saves you having to remember what they all are. Now, some of them are personal, which would be uh, variables relating to the individual. Others might be a company-wide variables, such as the company's web address and so on, which you can you can paste in. Okay, now if we want to make some changes to this, maybe we want to add a company image to, to this signature. We can just start typing or inserting imagery or anything like that, but we might, might want to be a bit more careful about the, the layout, in which case we can look at the source code. So there's a button here on the toolbar for source, and we can see the source code on the left in HTML format alongside the representation of it on the right hand side here. So that allows us to know exactly, if, in this case, we've got a table structure for this signature. So I'd be able to insert into the text on the, the left hand side exactly where I want my new content to appear, which would be a bit trickier doing it in the right hand side because you're not quite sure exactly where your cursor is. Okay. I'll show you uh, one of the features about inserting an, an image. I'm just going to empty this out. So we're starting from a, from a nice clean page. It makes it a, a bit easier for you to see what's going on. Uh, we've got on the toolbar here um, an insert image option. And if I click on that, you'll see I can paste in uh, a URL for, for an image to pop it in there. So you're going to need your image to be publicly accessible on the web somewhere. Now, our recommendation is actually to host your images in Google Drive itself because it gives you some uh, useful capabilities. And I'll show you how we can do that. If I jump over to another tab here in the browser, you can see I've got a folder called SIG Images all ready to go with a couple of images inside of it. The first thing that you really must do, and it's important, is to make sure that this folder, or at least the images in this folder, are publicly accessible on the web. So here I'm going to go to the sharing option and have a look at that. And we can see down here under general access, anyone in with the link can access these files and they can view them. That means anyone on the internet would be able to include and see this image in the email signature, which is exactly what we want. If it's not set like that, you would need to change it. Okay. Then what we could do is to obtain the URL for the image we want to use. We can select it. Go to the sharing option again, and this time copy the link. Now, if I go to another new tab in my browser and paste in that link and en hit enter, what you'll see is that we get the image, but we also get these other menu items around it and controls with the zoom and so on. And that's because what we're actually seeing is the Google Drive viewer. Okay, So we need to manipulate the URL slightly to get just the raw image. And the first thing we want to do is just remove the word, the slash in the view from the end of the URL. And then the other thing is here in the middle of it where we have file forward slash D forward slash. We want to replace that with thumbnail colon ID equals. So if I just type in here, thumbnail question mark, I should have said, not colon, ID equals. That's what the URL structure now that we need to get the raw image. I'm just going to copy that onto my clipboard and then I'm going to just hit enter so you can see there we get the raw image. So now if I jump back to, to Patronum and I want to pop in that image into my signature, I can click on the insert image icon there and I can paste in that URL into here and we get the image like so. Now I'm showing you that so that you know how to do it uh, manually in case you want to hand code it into the uh, HTML. But actually we've provided a much easier way of doing it. So while you could insert an image that way and manipulate the URL yourself, we've actually made it a lot easier for you. We give you a little icon next to the image one, which looks like the Google Drive icon. And that's also for inserting an image, but directly from Drive. So when we click on that one, it opens up our Google Drive. We can select the image we're interested in, click select, and it'll pop that image into our signature, but it will have automatically manipulated the URL for us. We can have a quick look at that by looking at the source code. And there it is. To change it, we've inserted that thumbnail ID portion of it in here. Now, the other thing that we might want to do is have some 
conditional statements which allow us to change what appears in the signature depending on some uh, context of the variables. What I mean by that is, let's say we put a, a phone number field into the email signature, but a user does not have a phone number in their profile, then we're going to be left with a bit of blank space in the email signature and it's not going to look quite right. So we've got this, these conditional options. And if I show you the way we use that, if I click on conditions here, what we can do is look for a particular attribute. So in this case, let's go for phone number. And then the condition that I'm looking for is for that field not to be empty. And if it's not empty, what I will do in here is I will insert the text phone colon, and then we'll paste in a variable or we'll type in the variable phone. So that's in double curly brackets. Now, underneath we have an else box. So what this would allow us to do is to put something different in the signature if the phone field is empty, in which case what we could do is type in switchboard and put in the company number, which would be company phone in double curly brackets. OK, so that pastes in variables. And the way that looks, if we have a quick look at the source code, is that we have an if statement and then the text and then an else statement and then the text and then we close off that if statement. So that's all done using HTML commenting uh, formatting. Okay. And we can use the preview button down at the bottom here to see what this would look like in the context of different users. So if I select a user from here, let's say Chris Daniels, he does have a phone number, so it shows his phone number. But if we choose, say, this dispatcher user here, they do not have a personal phone number, so it shows the switchboard number in their signature instead. So hopefully you can see there how that allows us to have, um, uh, you could construct quite a complex uh, signature that includes information for different users based on uh, their attributes. So another example of that might be to only show uh, an image file if somebody is in a particular department. So we might have a marketing banner that we want the marketing people to, to show in their email signatures, but nobody else. So again, we could use the conditional statements. Now, the way I would do that here is I might first put in a conditional statement that says if department and the condition would be contains and then we could say marketing. And then what do we want to insert? Well, I probably want to insert an image. So I'm just going to put a placeholder in here at the moment. So I'm just going to put III as a, as a placeholder, just to give us something that we can look at when we look at the source code here. So I'll look at the source code, look at the source code, and we'll see here's this conditional statement right here. So III there is where I'm going to replace a URL with my image. So I will put in the usual HTML image tag and I'll say the source is going to be um, a particular URL. And I'll grab that URL from my signature here. So we're going to use this sale um, banner here. So as we did before, I'm going to get that URL but I've got to do that manipulation on it. So I'm going to get rid of the last bits of the URL there. And I'm going to change the file ID part of it. Get rid of file ID. And we're going to replace that with thumbnail question mark ID equals. I'll copy all of that. I'll we'll jump back to our text and we'll paste that in here. Just close that off with the thing. And you see there the image appears. And of course, we should really close off the image tag as well. Now, let's have a look at a, a preview of that. If we look at this GMC dispatcher user, we don't see that image because this user is not in the marketing department. 
But if we change our context to Chris, who is in the marketing department, then we see that image appear as well. Now, there's a neat trick you can do with these images that are hosted through Google Drive to control the size of them. If we uh, have a look at our source code here and look at this sale image, what we can do is we can add some parameters to the end of the URL. And we're going to say ampersand, the and symbol if you like, and then SZ for size equals, and then we can put either a width or a height parameter on. Now, if you just put one, it'll automatically adjust the other one to suit to keep the aspect ratio correct. So if we say W, 100 you see it's scaled the image in the window on the right hand side there to be 100 now if i set a thousand it's going to scale it way up so using a, a little trick like that you can adjust the size of the image that means you don't have to host additional sizes of image and it also means that you're not going to get any distortion or, or um, pixelation if you scale the image uh, incorrectly so let me just uh, update that and Hopefully you find that uh, little trick useful and you found uh, all the things we've been doing in this video uh, helpful in your future email signature, signature creation. If you'd like us to do uh, any more videos on any other aspects of Patronum, please do uh, reach out to us and we'll be happy to help. And don't forget to follow Patronum on Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn.